Greetings, you mighty champion. I'm Pastor Glenn. Job 42, verse 10, 12, and 16. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. And the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning. He was the richest man in the East in the first few chapters. After this, uh, Job lived 140 years. God wants you prosperous. He wants you rightly rich. We're talking about being prosperous, God's way, okay? God says more about prosperity than any other topic in the Bible that he wants his people to prosper. We're working on renewing our mind, Romans 12:2, uh, to the fact that God wants us to be rightly rich. Are you with me? 2 Corinthians 9, 6, God equates giving money to promote the gospel to sowing and tithing to sowing seeds and reaping a harvest. 2 Corinthians 9, 6, the Amplified Bible says, Remember this, he who sows sparingly and grudgingly will also reap sparingly and grudgingly. He who sows generously, uh, that, that blessings may help come to someone else, will also reap generously and with blessings. Now, in context of tithing and giving, because we're talking about not just tithing and giving, not just planting a seed and considering your money a seed when you give to God, but we're talking about getting the harvest because a lot of people in your church that you know, that you love, that would give you the shirt right off their, your, their back if you needed it, have been tithing and giving to God for years and they're still broke. God don't like that. I don't like that. I want the body of Christ to prosper. God considers money seed. The CEV Bible says, Remember this saying, a few seeds make a small harvest, but a lot of seeds make a big harvest. The Good News for Modern Man, Good News Translation, says, remember that the person who plants a few seeds will have a small crop. The one who plants many seeds will have a large crop. The Message Bible says, a, a stingy man, no, a stingy planter gets stingy crop, gets a stingy crop. A lavish planter gets a lavish, lavish crop. The New Living Testament says this. Remember this. A farmer who only plants a few seeds. Do you see that? God's comparing giving to God to promote the gospel, to, to help the saints get educated on the word of God, get strong in the Lord and the power of his might. He considers that as seed planted and what he wants to give back to you is the harvest, but you cannot harvest unless you believe God for the harvest. That's why I'm trying to give you so many verses. In fact, I am very tempted to take these 225 verses and just spend a whole lesson reading them to you so that you'll listen and find out and say, yes, Pastor Glenn, or yes, Heavenly Father, that's right. Yes, you're, you want me to be the head and not the tail. Yes, I believe that I've given and it's given back to me. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Thank you, Father, that the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I shall not be in lack. I never come up short. You'll hear all those verses. Anyway, New Living Testament. Remember this. A farmer who only plants a few seeds will get a small crop, but the one who plants generously will get a, a, a generous crop. So, the next law of the harvest is we always, always, always reap more than we sow. Jesus said it like this. He's talking about seeds in Matthew uh, 13, 8. He says, still other seeds, he's, he's considering money and seed the same, fell on good soil where it produced a crop of 100, and, 100 comma, 60, comma, or 30 times what was sown. So when you seed, to promote the gospel, or you give to, to where you're being fed spiritually, then that you need to believe for money to come back to you. And it's going to come sometimes 30, sometimes 60 times more, sometimes 100 times more like God, Isaac had in Genesis 26. And we brethren as Isaac was are the children of promise. Now that's huge. If you sow one seed of corn, it produces a stock that contains maybe two ears of corn. What I did is I took a Sharpie, as stupid as this sounds, and I took a, a head of corn and I put a, a Sharpie mark on every little corn 
kernel, I guess I can call it, there were more than 700. That's 700 times increase from one seed, and that's one ear. You won't find any investment or bank banks that are paying interest like that. But Jesus said you'll get that type of return in God's system and eco economy if you will believe it. In the whole universe, all that God the Father wants, He simply wants to be believed. Adam and Eve broke God's heart because God told them, if you eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, in that day you will die. They, they believed the devil more than they believed God. They ate of the tree and they died spiritually, even their, though their bodies lived more than 900 years later. Okay? It's, it's not just giving that brings the increase. It's your faith. It's your understanding of this law and your faith in this law and your faith in what God has promised that assures the increase to come back to you. Malachi 3.11 says that God will rebuke the devourer for the tither's sake. I have had that. That's more important to me than the hundredfold. God rebuking the devourer. I've got a lot of stories where God saved my life. I was invited to my in-laws for like a birthday party, okay? And my brother-in-law was drunk. He was mad at me for some reason. I don't even remember. That was a number of years ago. But I was tithing and giving and believing God for the increase, believing God to rebuke the devourer for my sake. He came out of the bedroom with his hand behind his back. And when he pulled his hand forward, he was standing four feet from me. He had a 357 Magnum and he was drunk. And I could see the hollow point bullets in the cylinder facing me with the, with the barrel. I could see that it was loaded. He pulled the hammer back. When you pull the hammer back on a revolver, it is very sensitive. You can barely accidentally touch it and it will go off. He was four feet away from me with the hammer back with a six inch barrel. And those of you guys know about shooting and guns, the longer the barrel, the more powerful the bullet. He was aiming at my stomach with a 357 Magnum four feet away hollow points and he had the hammer back and he was drunk. But God rebuked the devourer for my sake. His sister came in, started hugging him and say, come on, uh, I'll, I'm gonna say his name, Walter. Come on, Walter, uh, put that gun away, blah, blah, blah. And the thing was resolved. God saved my life because he rebuked the devourer. I've got all kinds of stories like that. I was uh, mugged in Mexico. I could have been killed and thrown into a, a, a trough or a pit somewhere, but God saved my life. So anyway, I want to tell you the John Kerr story. This is so important. At the age of 14, John Kerr was converted to Jesus Christ under the ministry of uh, Dwight L. Moody. Some of you old people know that name. Some years later in 1902, Mr. Kerr read about the story of Jacob in the Bible who vowed uh, in Genesis 28, 22, said, he said, God, if you'll prosper me, I'll give you a tenth. Okay. And so uh, 22 years later, as you read the story in Genesis, Jacob returned to his house extremely wealthy. He had nothing to begin with. He, 22 year, years later, he was extremely wealthy with a great number of servants and cattle. And he became one of the richest men in the world as a result of keeping his covenant of tithing, okay? So that, move, that account moved Mr. Alexander Kerr, and he made a covenant with himself and with God to tithe just like Jacob did. And at the time, Mr. Kerr had mortgage on his house. He owed a lot of obligations. He was burdened down with worries and debts and had payments and stuff like that. However, he was determined to prove God like Jacob did. Mr. Kerr often remarked that if a modern day skeptic wanted to prove that there's a God, that the Bible is, is God's word and is true and God's promises are true, all they need to do is tithe for one year and God would prove to them without a shadow of a doubt that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever, Hebrews 13, 8. So within three months, Kerr began to, after beginning to tithe, 
unexpected money and resources begin to come in and bless him. With very little money on hand, though, Kerr organized a firm known as the Kerr Glass Manufacturing Company. Those Kerr jars that you put fruits and vegetables and stuff in and can them, okay? It became one of the largest firms selling glass fruit jars in the United States at that time. That was the early 1900s. His company was headquarters in San Francisco. Mr. Kerr put practically everything he owned, every cent, into that enterprise of glass fruit jar canning jars, okay? But in 1906, the great San Francisco earthquake occurred while Kerr was out of town. His friends came to him, wrote him. Uh, in those days, they tell, had to telegraph him. They didn't have phones and all that every place. And they said this to Kerr. Kerr, you're a ruined man. He repeated, I don't believe it. I'm not a ruined man. If I'm a ruined man, the Bible is not true. I know God promised that I would prosper and he'd rebuke the devourer for my sake. I know God will not go back on his promise. He said that God would rebuke the devourer for his sake if he tithed. That's what I said when a guy was holding a 357 with a hammer back four feet from me at my stomach and mad at me. So he wired San Francisco and, and he received a telegram back that said, your factory is in the heart of the fire, Mr. Kerr, and undoubtedly is destroyed. The heat is so intense, we'll be unable to find anything out for a number of days. About a week after the earthquake and fire, a second telegram came. It said, everything, it said, everything for a mile and a half in every direction from your factory is burned, but your factory is miraculously saved. Mr. Kerr immediately boarded a train and went back to San Francisco. The factory was a two-story wooden building with huge tanks where the, they kept the melted glass in tanks at a temperature of 2,500 degrees. Oil was used for the fuel. The building was probably, it was made out of wood, the building was. It was probably the most flammable building in San Francisco. The fire raged on all sides of the factory. It crept up to the wooden fence surrounding the building and even scorched the fence. And, and then the flames leaped over his building and burned another mile and a half in the other direction, in every direction. The radius around his building, mile and a half destroyed, everything. However, the wooden fence survived. It was scorched, but not burned up. The building was untouched. And there was not one, this is the testimony, not one single glass jar in a glass jar canning factory building that was cracked either by the earthquake or the fire. An incredible miracle took place because somebody had enough word in them to believe that if you give, it's going to be given back to you and the devourer is going to be rebuked for your sake, right? In, in 1912, Mr. Kerr wrote his first leaflet on the subject entitled God's Cure for Poverty, which he talked about tithing and giving and believing for the increase, which we don't hear in most churches. We hear, you got to tithe, you got to give. They don't tell you how to get the increase. I'm telling you that. So this was followed by another track entitled God, God's Loving Money Rule for Your Pro Financial Prosperity. I think that was the name of it. Every case of fruit jars that left his factory contained one of those leaflets. From 1912 to the time of his death in 1924, he had freely distributed more than 5 million of these leaflets encouraging God's people to tithe and believe God for the increase. I shared that in a church in Arcadia, California. And old years ago, an old man came up to me and said, after Mr. Kerr died, his wife continued to live, and I used to know his wife. Now, she's already passed, he's telling me. He said, but, but she brought up that subject and said that everything that, that Kerr 
noted and what I just told you is true. That encouraged me because I just shared this story. I didn't know if it was an urban legend. I thought it was true. I wanted it to be true, but I found out a guy living that knew Mr. Kerr's wife said it was true. Okay, you can Google the story. Uh, Kerr canning jars. Whew. Luke 6, 38, given it shall be given unto you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over men shall give unto your bosom. I'm Pastor Glenn. Please like and subscribe below. Feed on the scriptures that promise prosperity in Jesus' name and make a great day.